This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to do a Windows Tablet Smackdown. We have the Microsoft Surface Pro right here. New kit on the block, very hot, and also pretty new. We have the Lenovo ThinkPad Tablet too. 10.1 inches versus 10.6 inches. Intel Atom versus Intel Core i5. Big performance differences, big battery life differences, size and weight differences. We're going to look at them now. So here we have two highly portable Windows 8 tablets. Microsoft Surface Pro right here at 10.6 inches diagonal display and the Lenovo ThinkPad Tablet 2 at 10.1 inches. Both of these guys have very wide viewing angles, nice sharp displays. Surface Pro is full HD 1920 by 1080 versus the usual 1366 by 768 on the ThinkPad Tablet 2. Now given how Windows desktop scaling means, and I mean this part right here where things can get really teeny at higher resolutions, at 10.1 inches I'm not complaining. But that's not the most important difference here. What's important is the ThinkPad Tablet 2 runs on an Intel Atom dual core 1.8 gigahertz CPU. That's the Clover Trail that's used in Windows 8 tablets. And it has licensed PowerVR graphics, rebranded as Intel GMA, but it's really still PowerVR graphics. About as ca capable as a mobile OS tablet, but nothing to compare with the Intel HD 4000 integrated graphics on Surface Pro and the 1.7 GHz Intel Core i5 ULV CPU, which is your Ultrabook inside, basically. So, first off, important thing is how much power do you need? Is this going to be your main computer? If this is going to be your main computer for most folks, you're going to want the Surface Pro because, again, it is basically an Ultrabook in a teeny tablet outfit. Whereas this guy here running on the uh, Atom CPU, one task at a time, not so bad. Uh, you can do things like Photoshop, it's not going to be as quick, but it will work. But you wouldn't want to use it as your main computer day in, day out, unless the only thing you do is web surfing, office, and some social networking and email, and that's about it. Both of these are available with accessory keyboards, and we have them set up with them right now. The Lenovo is a Bluetooth keyboard with stand. And this is the Microsoft Type keyboard. You can choose either the one with the clicky keys, which is this one right here, or the Fabric keyboard that we have right here, which has ah, just about no tactile feel. There's ridges around the keys, but it makes an auditory click, and you can feel the ridges, but nothing moves here. But it's your choice. This is a little bit thinner. They weigh about the same. Now, in either case, you can use external USB or Bluetooth keyboards if you want, so you're not limited to just using these keyboards, but we're just looking at what you can get bundled with it. As keyboards go, you know, Lenovo makes an awesome keyboard here. So it, it's 10.1 inches. That's still the drawback. Nice keys, nice key travel, sculpted kind of thing going on. But still smaller than the Surface keyboard at 10.6 inches. It's actually a little bit bigger. Now if we compare the footprint of the Surface keyboard, you can see... You do get a little more space for your keys on the surface, just a little bit. And it does make a difference when you're typing. Honestly, if you could marry the two of these, that would be the nicest. But then Microsoft wanted to keep this very thin so it could act as a cover and not be too cumbersome. Which keyboard do I personally prefer? Surprisingly, I prefer the Surface Type Cover. It actually is a bit more roomy, a little easier to use. I usually love ThinkPad keyboards. Not, again, not a terrible keyboard right here, but a little roominess actually helps. One thing that we have here is the optical eraser stick pointer with the clicky buttons here, and this one has a more traditional trackpad, though it's small. And in terms of the footprint that they, they have when they're sideways and the viewing angles, we'll just take a look right here, and you can see. Surface obviously takes up more space. It's going to do that. It's a bigger device, and we have the kickstand right here deploying out. Now, this guy has sort of like a kickstand look to it, but it's not. It's just sitting in a little ridge here in this keyboard dock. So the ThinkPad is going to be even more compact and more portable. In terms of viewing angles, if you're using them as they are, the kickstand has a fixed angle and so does the ThinkPad tablet. The, the Surface kicks back a little bit more, a little bit for a better viewing angle if you're using it lower, though really both of them are designed to be used on the desk. So how about size and shape of these things? Surface Pro, two pounds. Lenovo ThinkPad Tablet 2, amazingly light, 1.3 pounds, just a hair under. From the front footprint, you can see they're pretty close in size. There is a half inch diagonal difference in the display. So obviously a little bit more compact for the ThinkPad Tablet 2. But if we take a look around on the side, you can see the surface is just over a half an inch thick. And it has vents, look at that, too, for cooling. ThinkPad Tablet 2, remarkably thin. 
So certainly a difference in portability. This guy is like carrying around your basic mobile OS tablet. It's actually lighter than the iPad with Retina display, for example. Really, really very portable. Of course, it lacks the power in terms of performance that the Surface has, but that's something else. Now, if we look at the back, very different, yet both pretty high quality products. I would say the ThinkPad Tablet 2 feels well made, and I love the soft touch grippy back, but it doesn't have the kind of ooh, ah, uh, chic, really super high-end feel of the Surface Pro or of the Sony Bio Duo, which are really kind of pushing that, that high-end desire-related experience where you just look at something and say, oh, that's so pretty and so well-made, I just want to own it. But anyway, here's the back. The kickstand is deployed on this. Vapor magnesium casing, otherwise it's mag in other words, it's magnesium alloy casing. Very good-looking, very unique, very modern. ThinkPad Tablet 2 looks more like your basic tablet with that thinkpad -y kind of raven black looking finish, a little bit of a soft touch feel to it. So different kind of products there. ThinkPad Tablet 2 a little bit more utilitarian, still strong, still pretty rugged. You can flex the back a little bit on it. Uh, clearly this guy here is very rigid. You can't flex anything on the surface. Both of these guys have a single USB port. You get USB 3.0 on the Surface Pro versus 2.0 on the ThinkPad Tablet 2. That's because the Intel Atom Clover Trail CPU only works with USB 2.0. So no matter which Intel Atom you pick, right now that's where you're going to get USB 2.0. 2 gigs of DDR2 RAM on the ThinkPad Tablet 2 versus 4 gigs of dual channel DDR3 RAM on the Surface Pro. Again, that has to do with the architecture inside. Intel Atom addresses just 2 gigs of RAM and it works with DDR2. Storage is also kind of different. They both use flash storage, but the Surface uses a, a true SSD drive with an M SATA interface. Now, it's not easy to open up the Surface and get at that thing if you want to upgrade it yourself, but M SATA is a whole lot quicker and it's available with 64 or 128 gigs of storage. ThinkPad Tablet 2, mostly you'll find it available as a 64 gig. Uh, they will make a 32 gig as well. Then that uses the eMMC interface, which is sort of like an internal permanent SD card interface. It's not as quick. So you'll notice that when you're doing things like installing software. Now granted, once you get your software installed, you don't notice this so much, but boy, it's slow when you install software on Intel Atom Windows 8 tablets. Both of these are full Windows 8, no RT here. So you get the desktop, you get access to all the Windows 7 applications that you'd like to install, 32-bit Windows on the ThinkPad Tablet 2 versus 64-bit on the Core i5-based Surface Pro. And again, that has to do with the CPU. The Intel Atom is a 32-bit CPU. The Core i5 is a 64-bit CPU. To most of you, that probably won't make much of a difference, whether it's 32 or 64-bit. But pretty much most computers that have been on the market for the last two years have all been 64-bit with Windows 64-bit OS. Both of these have micro SD card slots, compatible with SDXC high capacity cards. They both have 3.5 millimeter audio jacks. For monitor out on the ThinkPad Tablet 2, we have mini HDMI, and on the Surface Pro, we have a mini display port. Mini display port is more versatile because it can drive higher than 1080p resolution monitors, some, like some of those nice Dell monitors that are 27 or 30 inches. And you can get dongle adapters that adapt to HDMI and VGA. Now, most people probably just want to use HDMI. A few you might want to use VGA. So uh, for a lot of you, it's going to be a toss-up, and you might actually prefer just the straight HDMI. Though this is mini HDMI. You'll still need a little adapter to convert it up to normal size HDMI on the ThinkPad Tablet too. Both of these are available with Wacom digitizers, and here's a pen for the ThinkPad Tablet 2, which actually fits in a silo up here. Wow, just about no tablet these days has a silo for the pen, so nice to have that. And this is the pen that you get with the Surface Pro. Bigger pen, nicer to hold, but drawback is, yes, you can clip it magnetically to the little charging port on the side right here to carry it around, but it's still easy to knock off or lose, especially when you're charging the tablet. So nicer pen to use pen that actually fits in the silo here. So both of these have a Wacom digitizer inside, Wacom digital pens right now. WinTab drivers are not available. Anything that uses the modern Windows Ink API like Fresh Paint or ArtRage, uh, Office 2013, OneNote, you'll get pressure sensitivity there, no problem. But WinTab is used by Adobe Photoshop, Corel Painter, and SAA Paint Tools as well. So you're in the same boat with both of these. Now everybody had a, a sniff fit basically about Surface not shipping with WinTab drivers out of the box. Seems like tablets never do. You graphic artists know about that. So Microsoft and uh, Wacom and Adobe said, we're working on it. Hold on, soon, soon. We haven't heard anything about the ThinkPad Tablet 2 or its friends like the Dell Latitude 10, but I'm sure eventually it will come, but it may not be the first. What happens if you try to install Wacom's drivers that they have available on their website on either of these tablets? It says, oh, 
tablet not recognize it won't install. Now in terms of what the inking experience is like on each of these, I would say it's actually very similar. It's very smooth, it's very pleasant to use, the pressure sensitivity works well, you get 1024 levels of pressure sensitivity. Uh, the drawback with, with the Atom based tablets is they can get a little sluggish. With OneNote, after you get about one full page of ink notes going, things get a little slow. It's still usable, it doesn't crash, but it gets a little bit slower. And honestly, using apps like Corel Painter or even ArtRage, uh, I, I find the responsiveness better on a Core i5 and I much prefer that. Now I haven't really had too much lag going on though on the ThinkPad tablet too, that said. In terms of display quality, both have very wide viewing angles, both are very bright. Obviously the Surface Pro wins here, it's full HD, a whole lot higher resolution. Now we have the, the scaling set to 125% to make things more readable, so depending on your scaling settings when you're in desktop mode, you may or may not see all that much more on screen, but what you see is always going to be sharper, which is nice. Both have dual band Wi-Fi 802.11bgn, neither have Wi-Di wireless display. They both have Bluetooth 4.0. There is no NFC on either of these models. Lenovo has a 3G option, 3G, 4G with AT&T LTE, and there's a full-size SIM card slot, not micro SIM, on the top. However, that one's a whole lot more money. You go from 679 to 949, which is oddly expensive just to add that 3G, 4G mo module inside. Both have front and rear cameras, 720p up front for the Surface Pro, 720p on the back for the Surface Pro. Really sad camera there on the back on the Surface Pro. People make jokes about taking tablet videos and photos, but hey, if you got it in your hands and it's a handy thing, you're going to use it, you will be discouraged if you do that with Surface Pro. It's fine for video chat, for Skype, but that's about it. With Lenovo, we get a 2 megapixel camera up front, good for video chat, and a little bit more maybe even, but mostly just that, and an 8 megapixel camera on the back. Not the most stunning example that we've seen of a camera on a smartphone or a tablet, but pretty good and world better than the Surface Pro. Now, again, we get to the most important point here, which is the performance difference between these two. You've got 2 gigs of RAM here versus 4 gigs. More multitasking possible, the more memory that you have. Also, much faster CPU and graphics processor built into the Surface Pro. If it's going to be your primary computer, you definitely want the Surface Pro, unless your needs are super duper light, uh, web browsing, office documents, some email, that's about it. And you can see the difference in the Windows Experience scores right here. Significantly higher for the Surface Pro than for the ThinkPad Tablet 2. And the ThinkPad Tablet 2 does pretty decently among Intel Clover Trail Atom tablets. So it, it's a it's a good example actually performance wise. It's better than some of the other ones that are out there, though they're all fairly close because the hardware is pretty similar. Now when it, we talk about PC Mark 7 for the benchmark score, we're looking at 4657 for the Surface Pro versus 1424 for the ThinkPad Tablet 2. So significant difference there in performance. Now when is this going to be an issue for you? If you're just running Word on, on the ThinkPad Tablet 2 or just running a web browser with a couple of tabs or maybe even you have both of those open, then it's fine. But you really don't want to have Photoshop open and running. You don't want to push the envelope. Anything beyond a couple of concurrent lightweight apps or one heavyweight app like running by itself like Photoshop for example. Also video editing, you can do that HD video editing on the Surface Pro. I still prefer even more powerful full mobile instead of ULV CPUs, but it's actually fairly capable for editing 1080p video. Forget doing that on the ThinkPad Tablet 2 on a Clover Trail. It just does not have the horsepower. And when it comes to gaming, this guy, Surface Pro, has Intel HD 4000 graphics. And if you've watched our full video review of that, you've seen us playing Civ on it, and we've played Skyrim as well. And you can do that. You're going to have to use low settings. You may not always be able to run it at full 1080p, but it plays not on the Clover Trail. You're going to stick with apps that are in the Microsoft Store, the live tile apps, that kind of stuff there, and casual games or significantly older games, not a gaming machine at all. Speaking of the live tile interface, when we're in this interface, they're both very responsive and fast. Apps here run quite well on both platforms. We will notice the difference is if you're doing something like even just downloading Windows updates or app Updates, for some reason it takes a lot longer on Atom CPUs. It's pretty zippy, very fast on a Core i5, and sometimes kind of sluggish on the Atom. Gets the job done eventually, it will download, but you'll notice the difference in performance there. So just when you're thinking to yourself, well, geez, why would anybody buy the ThinkPad Tablet 2 then, right? Well, it is a whole lot lighter, it's a whole lot thinner. As Clover Trails go, this one actually does get a little warm on the back, but it's still not burning hot. No fan, 
silent nine hours of battery life. Yeah, so if your needs are light, but you need something that lasts a long time on a charge that you can count on all day, not having to run to find a power outlet, ThinkPad Tablet 2 actually wins in that respect. Nine hours versus four and a half hours of battery life. Something that has a fan and you can actually hear if you're stressing it, blowing sometimes. And it gets toasty on the back too, not burning hot, but a little bit hotter than the ThinkPad Tablet 2. But has full computer inside. So there's the trade-off. So for those of you who really are looking for a secondary portable tablet kind of device for light computing work, the ThinkPad Tablet 2 can still make some sense, even if it's not the sharpest knife in the drawer here. And then there's the other thing, that's price. The ThinkPad Tablet 2 for the 64 gig with the Wacom Pen and Active Digitizer is $679. Surface Pro starts at $899. Now both of that will be for 64 gigs on either one. If you want the 128 gig model, it's going to be $999 on Surface Pro. Each of these, the keyboard's going to cost you extra sold separately $120 or so. So that makes the choice pretty clear, I think, for some of you out there. Because now you're saying to yourself, yes, I just want something that like an iPad or an Android tablet just runs really, really all day on a charge. I can watch several movies on the airplane, not worry about that. And I don't need to run Photoshop. I'm not a, a software developer and I don't want to run Visual Studio and I don't do HD video editing, that kind of thing. Gee, ThinkPad Tablet 2 starts to make a lot of sense. But for those of you who do need commuting, computing power, Surface Pro is clearly going to be the one for you. So that's the Lenovo ThinkPad Tablet 2 versus the Microsoft Surface Pro Tablet Comparison. And as you can see, they both excel at different things. It really depends how much money you want to spend, how much power you need, how much battery power you need, stuff like that. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Don't forget to watch our video review of each of these products and read our written reviews on mobiletechreview.com. And also, subscribe to our YouTube channel.